Hello! Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be demonstrating the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pen, and I could not be more excited about this. I'm Stephanie. I go by StampJG here on YouTube and at my blog at StampJG.com, and I like to make detailed product demonstration videos and also videos that show creative ways to use the tools and products. And today we're going to look at the Freestyle Pens by We Are Memory Keepers. You might be familiar with the pens that they have already come out with that fit in a digital die cut machine, the original foil quill pens, and these came out as a set of three with fine medium and broad or fine standard and broad, and they're powered with USB and they heat up and transfer special foil onto projects using your digital die cut machine. What We Are Memory Keepers has done is made these into a more of a pen form that we can use them with our in our hand. And they've released a couple of different sizes. The first three are fine, standard, and broad, and those correlate to what we've already seen if you um, have the ones for your digital die cut machine. But in addition, they have released a pen with a flat chisel tip. This pen is going to make it really great for calligraphy people. <laughs> calligraphy people. You calligraphy people. You great creatives who are good at calligraphy will love trying this out. I'm going to attempt using it, but I'm by no means a calligrapher or a hand lettering enthusiast. I, uh, my handwriting is average. <laughs> but anyhow, they come in sets of three or you can buy them all individually. This pen is only available as an individual set, unless um, you go to HSN and I think they have them all. They have them all as one big happy set. Each of the pens comes with a roll of gold foil. It is six inches long and it is 48 inches wide. So there's plenty of gold foil um, for you to use with your project. In addition, you're going to need something like the We Are Memory Keepers placement tape. This is very similar to washi tape, but it really releases very nicely. I have to admit, I really, really like this tape. It releases without um, damaging your paper or the foil. And if you have the previous foil quill pens, they're available that way. Or you can buy them in a package from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, and it has three rolls of three different colors of placement tape. In addition, there is foil sheets. These are the smaller sheets, and these are four by six inches. Or there's actually larger rolls and sheets that are um, available too. So there's a wide range of tools and accessories, in addition to the magnetic mat, which is a separate accessory that you can also purchase. So let's talk about the pens. They come, again, in fine, standard, and broad tips. And I will bring each one of these closer so that you can see. And this is the chisel tip. Let's see if I point it in this direction. It's width, I guess, is, I think I saw it was about 0.5 millimeters. And I don't have a measurement for this. I think I measured it on a ruler about 3 sixteenths. Just, just under a quarter of an inch wide. So one of the other things that you will need to use this is some form of power. And it's powered with a USB um, plug-in. And a lot of times if you are if you have a laptop off to the side or um, a computer that's nearby within range of the cord, and I will measure that for you, um, you can power it that way. You can also power, power it by plugging it into an adapter that's already into a wall socket. So the same type of adapter that you would use to power or to charge your cell phone, for example, if it fits, a, most of them will fit a USB into it that can power this directly into an outlet. 
or you can use a cell phone accessory called a power bank, a battery charger, um, a battery cell. It's, it's a cell phone, um, as I said, a cell phone accessory that you can plug into your phone to keep it running or to charge the battery. And I have one that I um, got from work as a gift, as a thank you gift, and I use that. But We Are Memory Keepers also has one for sale. But you could check out Amazon, and I would think pretty much any of them would work as long as it can power a USB device. Now, let's plug one in and test it out. I do not have a wall socket um, too near my craft desk, so this was across the room, but I just wanted to show you what I'm using. This is a uh, cell phone, is a um, power adapter that plugs into the wall and the USB fits in here so I can plug this in. Um, this is just one I had from an old cell phone or a tablet um, and it's Android but I don't believe that matters because I believe they're all an output that is just a USB. My little power brick or power supply here is just this little tiny thing with an end in it and I can plug in. Let me start with uh, I'm going to plug in one of these. Oops, plug it in the right way. And my end is showing me that it's cor correctly in. And there's a little light that comes on on the end of the foil quill. If you can see that. So the foil coil is heating up and they say to let it heat five minutes before you use it. The cord itself is 38 inches long. So you have enough width for 30, to be 38 inches away from your um, power source. Let's talk about the surface that you want to use this on. The foil quill is a heated item, so you want to have something that's going to have some heat resistance to it. You probably don't want to go use it on your cool dining room table um, or on something that might melt. I'm going to test out a few things to see how that works. The other thing is that you want something that's going to be smooth. So when the pen glides over your project, it's not going to encounter any divots or bumps that might make it skip over the foil. The instructions with the foil quill say to write slowly or to draw slowly so that you're not um, pushing hard into your project and wrinkling the foil. So you also want to give it time to heat and adhere the foil to your project. To go ahead and test some of the surfaces, I have heat up and I've got heating the um, broad tip freestyle pen and I'm going to note that a little bit it has this barrel this rubberized area down here where your fingers go it is a little warm I'm going to say it's a little warm and you get beyond it and it gets really warm and maybe I'm a little sensitive but I'm just going to say be a little bit careful with this because it is heat and not, I don't generally go around trying to destroy my, pro, my, my tools, but I thought I would test this out. I am just going to set my pen tip directly against my black. Um, this is a self-healing cutting mat. I think a lot of us have this on our um, desks. So I'm just going to set this down and count to five. And you can see it left a mark. And while there's no divot, it did make a mark out of it. And if you push hard, you can make a mark in it. So this is not a heat proof surface. I think you probably could work on it as long as you have something under your project. Like a piece of cardstock forget when you're doing this you are going to have a piece of cardstock between you and the surface you're working on because chances are you're working on a card or a card front or something. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try it again. This time I put down a Tim Holtz, this time I put down a Tim Holtz craft mat. 
a Ranger Craft sheet. And these are Teflon. They are meant to withstand some heat. And I'm going to draw little circles. And that seems to have protected my surface. So having one of these down on a surface might help some. Ideally, you will want to work on something like a glass mat. This is a We Are Memory Keepers glass mat that came out with these several years ago. I'm sure a Tim Holtz craft mat would work just as fine. So you can work on this and it's nice and smooth so that your project is going to be skip free. I have my little power bank off to the side here. I'm going to go ahead and write. And I'm not adhering anything right now. That's a whole other thing I want to look at in a minute. So I'm going to write hello. And you can see immediately why you need to tack it down. magnetic mats and foil cool has a magnetic mat and I also have a Wendy Vecchi magnetic mat the make art station it's metal the other thing is these grids have just a little bit of a raised feature just a little bit so you can feel them and that's gonna make a difference when you're moving your pen along your project so if you turn it over onto the back let's I'm just going to test it to make sure it doesn't bubble the paint. So I'm 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. And you're going to want to be careful with the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station because it does leave just a little bit of a ding into the paint. So, and those aren't coming out. Those went through the paint. So, of course, other than a glass mat, like the We Are Memory Keepers or the Tim Holtz glass mat, I'm sure there's other ones that are on the market. Foil Quill, We Are Memory Keepers also has come out with their magnetic mat. And this is totally smooth, even though it has grid lines. And it comes with magnets, so it makes it easier to hold down your project. So this is going to be a great accessory to have with it. I am going. My first project I'm going to make is not going to use this, but I wanted to let you know that this is a really good surface if you don't have something already like a glass mat. Now a glass mat is not magnetic and you're going to have to use tape. So let's go ahead with the glass mat because I know it's heat proof. And one of the things that Foil Quill said that you can do is to stock here. And I have a piece of foil that I have already, already stamped with archival ink. They recommend stays on. I have uh, Ranger Archival. And the idea with this is that you could either handwrite something that you wanted to, but if you wanted to trace a stamped image onto your project, you could also do that. You stamp the image onto the foil, and then you simply trace the foil. You trace the image on the foil. So I'm going to use a piece of tape if you wrinkle it, just simply peel it up. And 
And when I put this down, I'm pulling ever so slightly this way and up to keep from wrinkling what's already on the foil because it's going to wrinkle anyhow when you move your pen over the foil. And because the glass mat is this pretty aqua color, you are not going to see it with the tape too well. Sorry about that. And I am pulling up ever so slightly, trying to keep the foil tight so that it doesn't wrinkle as much. Okay. So again, I have a my foil quill has been heating up my freestyle pen. I am using the medium tip and I'm going to trace over this item right here. I'm going to zoom back in and then I'm just going to slowly, they say go slowly and I'm also going to recommend that you don't apply too much pressure. And the other thing is I'm just going to let you know that when you're doing it you can put your head over your project while you're tracing it so you can see it. Um, I'm not going to do that for the sake of the videos because you don't want to see the back of my head. So I am going to be moving away and looking under so I can see my lines. Then I have this cute little birthday candle. And I am showing this in real time so that you can see the speed I'm actually going. And one of the cool things is you can see the foil when it releases from the front of the paper so that you can see it has transferred. It's actually kind of cool. All right, let's see how this turned out. Not too bad. I think I'm going to need a little practice being a little more steady. But that is one way you can do it. So it, if you stamp onto the foil, you will have no problem transferring your stamped image onto your card front. You will probably want to know where to put it on your card front or possibly um, cut it out afterwards. That's always an option or use a die cut with it. One of the cool things that having a pen, handheld pen, a heat activated pen that you can use to foil, means that you can now use your scraps. I keep some of my foil, especially my cut sheets and my scraps in a, um, this is a stamp pocket. Some of you might be familiar with these. It's kind of a open flap little pocket. And I have two pieces of cardstock that I've cut down to seven, I think it's seven and by five, something like that. And I keep some of my sheets in here. And some of the foil, if you really want to use all of your foil and it's in good shape, this is something I had traced 
using my digital die cut machine using the original foil quill, you could use up all the little scraps that you have. For example, it would be a little bit hard for me to reuse this piece of pink foil but I could now use it on my project and go all the way around anywhere or use this middle piece. And this one stuck to my mat and some of the edge came off. So I can use all the rest of this foil and I can keep it aside, including the foil that I just used. So this is one really cool feature about having a handheld pen that you can now use up all your scraps. So for the fun of it, I'm going to tape this down. And you do want to be, keep it as tight as you possibly can without, you know, I don't think it would tear. I don't know that for sure. And this other side I'm just going to have to hold. One thing I wanted to try is what, how to fill something in. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to draw something and try to fill it in. Put a heart. See, I missed a spot. <laughs> you can see where I missed a spot. And it has some texture to it. Up close in person, you can definitely see the pen lines. So, again, it's going to be hard to fill something in, but the key is probably to use um, deliberate strokes of your pen to do that. So now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to plug in the calligraphy tip and let's play with that a little bit. I'm going to take this practice sheet of cardstock and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to reuse a piece of foil. I'm going to reuse as many pieces of tape as I can find. Okay, I am taking the chisel tip pen and I'm going to actually reposition this slightly. I need a little bit of an angle for me to write and I am going to try this out on the foil.
Okay. You can see with a little bit of practice you can get some nice thin and thick lines. And the foil transferred very nicely. You do need to go slow though to give the foil a chance to go and if you move fast it pushes the foil in front of it. It's a little hard to explain and it wrinkles just a little bit but this is actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and try this tool on the We Are Memory Keepers magnetic mat. And try a black piece of cardstock. And let's go with a piece of silver foil. And since I'm just practicing, I am just not really worried about lining it up too much. Go ahead and anchor both the cardstock and the foil down. So again, I have the chisel tip, and let me get this positioned better here. And actually, I need to turn my board so I can write. And I'm just going to write my usual hello.
I think this was probably not a good example. <laughs> My cardstock has got a texture to it, so let me try it with a piece of non-textured cardstock. I think all my black cardstock has texture on it, so let's try. Let's try this. You know, it's kind of helpful to go ahead and place opposite sides first. Now, as I said, I am not a lettering enthusiast. I, you can see my handwriting is average. But I wanted to try just regular handwriting. You can see that you can also do just some regular handwriting. So. Well, I hope you liked this overview of the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pen, using it with the We Are Memory Keepers Magnetic Mat. This is a cool tool to use, and stay tuned for another video coming soon, showing it how to use it with stencils. This time we're using the real pens with the real stencils, so stay tuned. Thanks for joining me!